Hello everyone and welcome to my... Uh, what is this? What am I looking at? It seems oddly familiar, but just a second. Oh, it's Windows 95. Well, that's something I haven't seen since <laughs> 1999, I think. But why is it here? I usually show you stuff in DOS. Well, here's the thing. It's the new year and I wanted to start with something a bit more different, a bit more special. And the year 2024 is special because we have at least two important birthdays. In August we have Doom 3's 20th anniversary and in September we have Doom 2's 30th anniversary and there's this really peculiar symmetry you know 3 2 20 30 anyway when windows 95 came along it presented an important question before game developers and that was should we make a windows version of our games that have already been released for dos and in some cases the answer was no like duke nukem 3d never had an official windows port or shadow warrior or blood or tomb raider other games however had official windows ports such as command and conquer or mdk or even quake uh, you've probably heard of windquake which was the original port for quake followed by gl quake and of course doom and this port was surprise surprise called doom 95 and here's a bit of info on it in case you're wondering that's wordpad hey remember wordpad <laughs> wow so early on there were attempts to port doom to windows 3.11 but it quickly became clear that it's kind of pointless because Doom, uh, because Windows 95 was round around the corner and it would have made this WinDoom thing obsolete immediately. So it never made it past beta stage. Curiously, it was worked on by none other than Gabe Newell. Yes, exactly that guy. And then, of course, there was the real Doom 95, which was the first fully functional Windows port of Doom, which was, of course, originally a DOS game. And it was designed to utilize a new technology, well, <laughs> new at the time, called DirectX. And there was even an advertisement with Bill Gates in it. Uh, you can easily find it on YouTube if you haven't seen it. Well, what are you waiting for? A few words about its features and specifications. Well, it was an official port, so it was not made by fans. In fact, it was made before the release of Doom's source code, which means that fan-made source ports simply couldn't exist at the time. And being the official port, it was used by its software in pretty much every Doom distribution they offered at the time, including the id anthology and the Doom Collector's Edition. The engine is pretty much identical to the vanilla DOS engine, with some very minor tuning up. It starts with the launcher, which I'll show you in a few seconds. It supported all classic Doom, iWatts, Ultimate, 2, TNT and Plutonia. It had some inaccuracies in terms of graphics and sound, like for example, the weapon sprite was drawn a bit inaccurately, especially at higher resolutions. And the sound had a lower pitch than it's supposed to be, so it sounds a bit uh, deeper than it should. It didn't have true MIDI support, which could be a problem for some custom files, but it did have two unique new cheat codes, FH, which is something like a no target mode, it makes you invisible to monsters, and the FH hole code, which 
just kills all enemies on a map except lost souls because the newer versions of the doom engine don't count them as enemies and that's because of the pain elemental and not surprisingly doom 95 works best under windows 95 and its successors 98 and millennium however on 2000 and xp it starts to have some glitches and other problems because it never really received any updates and so it started to become obsolete pretty quickly and on operating systems after xp it's hard to get running unless you apply some pretty complicated workarounds anyway let's take a look at it so yeah that's the launcher here we have some options including for network games although that i can't really show you that <laughs> because that's not even a real Windows 95, it's an emulation in PCM. And here you can select your IWAD. Yeah, we have all four of them. You can select a custom WAD file, I'll show you that a bit later. Difficulty level, episode and have some other options. Here are your configuration, keys, mouse, audio. Notice that it supports a, a bigger number of sound channels. DOS Doom on the supported 8. Some advanced options such as resolution. Yeah, these are the resolutions that Doom 95 could run at. And the best one overall is 640 by 400, which of course is by today's standards quite pathetic and small. But back in those days it was pretty impressive, let me tell you, it was mind-blowing. Anyway, let's take a look. So yeah, it's <laughs> Doom. Like I said, it's nearly identical to the vanilla DOS Doom in terms of functionality. Of, of course the resolution is higher, which is quite impressive. I mean, from the perspective of someone who had only played DOS Doom at that point, it was pretty mind-blowing to see it so sharp. And I can show you the new cheat codes. If we type FH, we get the message be very, very quiet and monsters can't see me anymore. They can't hear me. If I shoot my weapon, they will attack me. But they can't see me. Yeah, it's like a, a rough early version of the no target command that most modern source ports have. I'm invisible! And the other new cheat is, of course, FH Hall. It gives you the message by request and it wipes out all enemies on the map. Except Locked Souls. And of course, except the boss brain in Doom 2. So you can just win map 30, the icon of sin by typing the cheat. <laughs> it's not that easy. So this is the ultimate Doom. And earlier three episode versions of Doom, the ones that were referred to as the Doom Trilogy, can run in Doom 95 as well, but there are some problems with them. For example, if you try to select the new game option in the menu it will crash it will crash because it doesn't have the graphic for the die flash consumed option in the menu and if it can't find it it'll just kick you out <laughs> like this uh, some other bugs unique to doom 95 uh, for example the intermission screen of episode 4 is messed up it actually shows the intermission screen for episode 1 you can probably see the skybox is a bit out of proportion, it's bigger than it should be, also the shotgun sprite is bigger than it should be, I already mentioned the sound pitch, also the Doom 2 ending sequence where it shows you all the monsters, some of the monsters slightly glitch out while they are shown, 
but beside these few bugs, Doom 95 was a pretty stable and good port. Especially since there were no other ports at the time. So, uh, what about some custom maps? Well, there are two little problems here. First of all, Doom 95 has no support for the hacked patches whatsoever. So if you're trying to say to play something that uses a dehacked patch, it's out of the question. You have to use either DOS Doom or a modern source port. The other problem is that with this launcher you can only select one custom WAD at a time. So for example I want to play some Requiem. It's a classic WAD from 1997. It was included on Doom World's top 100 WADs of all time. There is a slight problem here though. It consists of two WAD files. A main one, which contains all the levels and new graphics, and the secondary one, which contains the new custom music. And I want to play Requiem with the custom music, but I can't because I can only select Requiem.wad. And if I select Requemus.wad, I will get the custom music, but <laughs> with the original Doom 2 levels. Ooh, what a conundrum. So what can I do in this case? Well, thankfully there was a workaround. You simply start Doom 95 with a command line parameter. It's similar to how you would launch this custom WAD in DOS Doom or a modern source port. And at first it doesn't give you any indication that it's working, but believe me, it's working. When you click new game, you get this message that you're playing a modified version of Doom. And you can see here that the WAD files are successfully loaded adding requiem.wat and adding requemus.wat so it works and we get to play requiem with the custom music something that i didn't do back in the day because i didn't know about this workaround so i played it with the original doom 2 music yeah not very nice but oh well what can you do Anyway, considering Doom 95 exists, uh, did its software make other such ports? I already mentioned Windquake. Although it's a completely separate thing, it has no connection to Doom 95. But was there something like uh, Heretic 95, for example? No, there wasn't. However, there was something else. See this mysterious red X up here? Can you guess what it is? Yep, it's Hexen 95. And again, it has a launcher, uh, a more sophisticated one. Ooh, it, it even works in steps, like first you choose single or multiplayer, new game or load the previously saved one. You can choose your character class. It even shows you the stats. Nice. You can choose your difficulty, you can record a demo if you wish, you can even load a custom WAD file, and notice it even explains what a WAD file is. I haven't seen any other source port do that. <laughs> and then you just click start. Ooh, you see some logos, which by the way don't appear in the DOS version, only in this one. And there we have it, it's, well, it's Hexen. Nothing different or unusual, it's just like DOS Hexen, but for Windows 95. And it even suffers from the same problems as Doom 95. Uh, you can probably notice, you can't see my weapon sprite. <laughs> That's because it's, again, with the wrong proportions. It's bigger than it should be and the sound pitch is probably messed up again 
and the reason these problems exist is because I suppose Hex and 95 was based on this 95. Makes sense, I guess. And yeah, in terms of appearance and functionality, it's pretty much identical to DOS Hex. So, in conclusion, what was the ultimate fate of Doom 95? Well, as you can probably imagine, it became obsolete pretty quickly after the year 2000, especially since newer hardware and newer operating systems like Windows XP became the norm. And of course, the source code for Doom had already been released by that point, so fans started making their own source ports and they were quite superior to Doom 95 in every respect and they supplanted it pretty quickly. And so Doom 95 became just something from the past, a forgotten relic that some people used back in the day but happily replaced with something like GZ Doom or Chocolate Doom or PR Boom or whatever, simply because they are better. They are better adapted to modern operating systems, they have more features, they have better support for custom WADs, for dehacked patches and so on and so forth. Still, Doom 95 does have its historical significance, being the first Windows port of Doom, being the first official port of Doom. Nowadays we have another official port, it's usually called the Unity port. It was released in 2019, I think, or something like that. Yeah, so, well, for the younger folks among you, I hope this was a useful historical lesson. And for the older veterans like myself, I hope you were reminded of the old days when that was how we played Doom. And indeed, I think I kept using Doom 95 for quite some time, like until 2007 or something, at which point I started to try out Z-Doom and other ports. And of course, I <laughs> quickly discovered that they're just so much better, and I retired Doom 95 altogether. Now, the only times I reminded of it are when I experiment with my emulations of Windows 95 and 98, where it actually works as intended. Anyway, that's all for now. Thank you and see you next time.